Hi, so hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, I'm here at the Building Centre and this is Woodwork number three with Clementine Blakemore of Clementine Blakemore Architecture. Um, the exhibition is behind me. Unfortunately, the conversations about climate change exhibition is only virtual at the moment and we've got some great stuff going up online, but we're hoping to be able to invite you all into the Building Centre as soon as we're able to open to the public again. But yes, check out the website for now. Um, Woodwork event series is kindly sponsored by Wood for Good. It's in association with the Timber Trade Federation who we put up this exhibition and event series with. Um, Clementine Blakemore, hi Clem. We, Clem and I first met at the Architectural Association where Clem did her part one. Um, and an interesting aside, the the building centre was actually started at the AA in 1931, and I hasten to add that neither Clem or I were there then. Um, but in 1931, Frank Yerbury started a materials library um, under the staircase at the AA as a way of showing students the most innovative materials and sharing new ideas. And that's something we're very much trying to continue through with the public programme, um, looking at materiality. And this um, series in particular looking at wood. So Clem, as I mentioned, was at the AA where she did her part one. She then went to the RCA for her part two, graduated with a distinction and founded her own practice in 2016. Uh, last year she was included in the Architects Journal prestigious 40 under 40 list. We're going to be talking to Clem or Clem will be sharing with us the St John's Music Pavilion in Bucking, Buckinghamshire. It's a small state primary school and the project was to design and build a new music pavilion for the school. And it was actually initiated as part of Clem's final design thesis at the RCA in 2014. So um, a long and interesting story, actually with some great collaboration. So not just the local community, but with Grimsdyke Farm, Hook Park and the AA and Webb Yates um, engineers. So we're looking forward to hearing more about the project and the project actually has had a lot of um, notice and accolades. It was, it had a Reba McCaslin bursary shortlisted for the Wood Awards, AJ Small Projects Awards and Reba Journal McEwen Awards. So yeah, congratulations, Clem. Really nice to see you again and looking forward to hearing more about this project. So over to you. Thanks so much, Vanessa. I'll just um, share my screen. Um, Hopefully this works. Um, can everyone see that? Um, so yeah, thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed the previous two talks. I think it's um, a great theme and um, uh, a really nice format. So I'm very happy to be involved. So um, Wood has featured quite heavily in the projects that we've done so far. A lot of the work has been quite small scale, self-build projects. Um, and the nature of timber construction um, lends itself really well to this. Um, the structural components can be prefabricated off site or made in a modular way so that when you're ready to raise the frame, the form often comes together very quickly in quite a celebratory way. Um, and I think one of the things I really enjoy about timber frame buildings is how clearly and elegantly um, a structural concept can be expressed. Um, in this case, it was the hyperbolic paraboloid form of a pavilion that we made for the design museum, um, which was formed from straight um, LVL, so laminated veneer lumber members, um, but arranged in such a way to create this sort of carved canopy. Um, but the project that I'm actually gonna talk about today, as Vanessa mentioned, is the music pavilion, um, a small building for a rural primary school in um, Buckinghamshire. So the project actually started in 2014 um, as my final design thesis um, at the RCA. One of my design tutors, Guan Li, has this really extraordinary research and fabrication um, facility um, uh, called, work, uh, called Grimsdyke Farm, where students um, can live and work for short periods of time, mainly on small scale experimental projects. Um, I had studied originally at the Rural Studio um, in Alabama, designing and building a house for my first year project. 
Um, Clem, sorry, I'm hopping in. I don't know if you can hear me. We can't see your screen. I think. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry. I think all you need to do is select the first option on the top left screen of screen share. Uh, resume You've share. You've only got your first page of your presentation. Let me just stop and begin again. Hold on a second. Brilliant. Dan Bogle said he could see it fine. <laughs> I think I think we couldn't. So yes, please do let us know in the we're, we're seeing you. Fine again. Can you see that? Yeah, so I can see that. And then maybe if you try and go to your first slide, we can, yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right. Is it worth just beginning again? Yes, you could if you wanted. Should I do that? Okay. <laughs> so, sorry about that, everyone. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, wood um, is a great sort of material for small scale design build projects. Um, the nature of timber construction, the way that frames can be fabricated off site or built in a modular way, lends itself um, really well um, to to raising of frames um, quite quickly. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about timber frame construction is the way that the um, uh, how clearly and elegantly structural concepts can be expressed. So in this case, it was a hyperbolic paraboloid form. Um, of a pavilion that we made for the design museum. Um, the project I'm going to be talking about today is the music pavilion, a small um, building for a rural primary school in Buckinghamshire. So the project, as Vanessa mentioned, was my final thesis um, at the RCA in 2014. One of my tutors there, Guan Li, has this really extraordinary research and fabrication workshop called Grimsdyke Farm. Um, where students can kind of live and work, maybe for a weekend, maybe for um, a couple of weeks. In my case, it was about six months in the end. Um, mainly, students work on sort of small scale experimental projects. Um, I had actually studied in my first year before going to the AA at the Royal Studio in Alabama, where I had designed and built um, a house for my first year project with a group of other students. And I was really eager to complete my studies with a sort of another built project. Um, to be honest, probably at that stage, not really grasping quite what a long process it would be. Um, so the farm sits on the kind of main road running through Lacey Green and the primary school, St. John's is literally sort of over the road. So I approached the headmistress at the start of my final year um, to propose a collaboration and with her develop the brief um, for a new music room. So the school site is formed of the original kind of Victorian uh, stone and brick school building with a number of um, single story extensions which have kind of been added to the school site over time. Um, my intervention, um, which was sort of at the northern end of the site had a kind of double pitch silhouette, which was obviously in part informed by the kind of pitched roof, roofscape of the existing buildings, um, but also quite strongly inspired by the local vernacular um, barns with multiple roof pitches um, of various scales. Um, I found some early sketch models when I was looking through images for this presentation, and it was clear that that kind of triangular structural frame was an idea, you know, sort of present from the start. Um, and the idea was that that would be expressed both internally um, and also externally through some kind of translucent skin. And this sort of evolved and was rationalized into a cleaner, sharper form with a timber lattice, not only forming the roof and side walls, um, but also filling the gable end providing sort of structural bracing and stability. So by this time, as Vanessa mentioned, I was working with Steve Webb from Webb Yates Engineers, who was my structures tutor at, for my first year at the RCA, um, and very generously agreed to work on this project pro bono, probably again, not realizing quite what a commitment he had made. Um, together, we developed um, uh, a structure formed of a series of kind of tapered timber members um, about a meter long, so sort of easy enough to sort of handle um, by a single person, bearing in mind all the time that this was going to be a self-built 
project. They were fixed together um, with a mortise and tenon joint to create a reciprocal frame, which is essentially a structure where each of the members is kind of supported by the adjacent one. Um, so the design was sort of resolved um, quite quickly over the course of a few months through one-to-one -one prototypes, again, making the most of Grimsdyke Farm and its facilities um, and also scale models. The making of which was actually a really excellent kind of dry run for the construction, um, which by this point was sort of imminent. Um, so this phase of the project was all funded entirely through sponsorship. So in-kind donations of materials um, from companies and organizations, the first of which was actually, well, I suppose, apart from Grimsdyke Farm, who committed to providing facilities. Next was Hook Park, which is, some of you might know, the AA's um, rural campus in Dorset, which is basically a kind of forest which is owned um, and managed by the AA. Um, so the timber was Norway spruce, which you may know um, as basically Christmas trees in a small form. Um, it's a softwood uh, and it was felled um, and roughly sawn and then delivered to Grimsdale Farm as a, as a green timber, so not kiln dried. Um, in preparation for a workshop, which I ran over the Easter holidays under the sort of umbrella of the AA's visiting school program, which is a whole series of workshops that it runs um, all around the world. So it was a really nice collaboration, even though I'd sort of left the AA and started at the RCA, um, still having those links and connections with the AA and kind of um, joining forces between the two schools was, was really nice. So I was joined by about 12 um, participants from all around the world mainly architecture students, but also design students. And we, over the course of two weeks, um, fabricated the frame. So CNC milled each of the tapered um, lattice members, hand sanded them. I think there are about 170 pieces altogether. This is us sitting on them. Um, and then assembled them in the school playground and then raised them um, into place, excuse the lack of PPE. This is not how I would um, build something now. Um, and then sort of um, fixed it all together. So I think the gable end was formed of two pieces which we joined in place and then the side walls um, came up and then the roof. So this was the, the frame by the end of the academic year. So suffice to say it would all taken slightly longer than I had planned. Um, and over the course of that summer, I, with the help of the very committed school caretaker, essentially completed it by forming a roof and enclosing the frame to kind of act as a canopy or a pavilion. And that was then used by the school um, as a sort of outdoor classroom in summer months for um, the next two years. Um, so I was obviously really committed to finishing phase two. By the time I'd finished phase one, I was actually already working for Doug and Morris in London, um, but very eager to continue working with the school and raising the funds um, for the second phase. So I held a series of workshops with the school children to kind of generate ideas for how the building could be enclosed and how it might be used. Um, so this is a really nice workshop that we held actually at Grimstyke Farm using model making um, with children as a way to kind of explore ideas. Um, I then got planning permission, um, resolved the detailed design. It was actually quite fiddly doing it retrospectively because although I knew there was always gonna be a second phase, um, you know, I hadn't really resolved the design. So there's a lot of kind of rethinking and tweaking to make it all work. Um, but the production of a series of technical drawings meant that I could go out to tender, get a price, and then have a kind of fixed target to fundraise for. Um, and this time I was quite eager to not self-build it myself. <laughs> I think I felt that I, you know, didn't have the skills really to sort of do it in a way that was, that was going to be kind of refined enough. 
um, and also not, not really the time. Um, and although the sponsorship in kind had been a fantastic way of kind of bringing people together within the community and enabling people to contribute in small ways that they were able to, it meant that you were sort of at the mercy of when someone was able to donate something and you couldn't really program a construction project property. So this time I wanted to raise cash funds and with the Parents Association, um, raise money all sorts of different ways through uh, the local amateur dramatic group, um, I think donated a thousand pounds. There were Christmas fairs, there was a crowdfunder. So all these different ways eventually um, raised enough money um, for the second phase. Um, and as I said, I had to sort of unpick how the various layers, the building would come off so the insulation could be fitted and then sort of reclad the building. Um, so this was it at the very beginning of the second phase of construction. Um, like as I said, adding insulation and recladding um, the, the structure. And I was working with Timber Workshop who are primarily timber framers. They don't usually do this type of um, contracting work, but um, it was absolutely brilliant having them on board because they kind of really understood the importance of the frame and how to kind of clean it and repair it and retrofit it um, in a way that I think a lot of contractors possibly wouldn't have um, grasped so well. Um, and so the building was finished in early 2019. Um, and I think there's a really nice sort of contrast between the front elevation, uh, which is quite opaque with this um, large rain screen and then the rear elevation, which has these sort of translucent polycarbonate um, panels, which emit really lovely, even northern light into the into the teaching space, um, and kind of glow um, from within when it's lit um, in the evenings, sort of expressing expressing the timber frame. Ex uh, internally, the frame again was left. Um, very clearly expressed. It was treated with a um, Envirograph fire retardant with a slightly white tint just to knock back the kind of orange hue that the timber had developed over time. Also very diligently sanded as it weathered um, quite badly being exposed for those two years. Um, and again, the sort of way in which it had been fabricated was left exposed. So those are kind of what's called little Mickey Mouses, which enable the CNC drill bit um, to form the hole for the mortise and tenon. Um, and then we worked with a great local um, furniture fabricator. We actually got, for this, we got funding, community um, funding from Wickham Council um, to develop sort of storage um, and display solutions for the, for the musical instruments. So those were pegs along the rear elevation, which they um, hung ukuleles from, and then also these large pull-out drawers. And I think that was a really important part of the project was previously the music teacher had stored instruments in cupboards and had to sort of move them around the school. And the idea was that in this space, everything could be on display, easily accessible and kind of inspiring for the kids. Um, and then this is my final image, just saying how it's really lovely in the summer, the sort of wide bifolding doors um, open up and the space kind of becomes more sort of public and, um, and performative and an opportunity for kind of uh, audiences to gather on that, on that grassy verge in front of the, in front of the building. Um, so that's been lovely to see it kind of occupied and inhabited in the way that we always imagined. And that is my last slide. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview. Uh, thanks so much, Clem. That was really interesting. Um, I'm not sure if you can see or hear me. Hopefully you can. Yes. <laughs> and that the project is a great, um, I mean, it's an exemplar project for the things that you care about, the kind of low energy consumption and the natural light and the renewable materials, but also incredible 
that you had so much other stuff to do. You had the um, the fundraising, the kind of community involvement. It's a really massive project. Mm-hmm. You're, the thing that you're working on now sounds like a sort of um, a really natural progression from this project. You're working in West Dorset on um, a series, conversion of a series of derelict farm buildings to turn them into an educational farm, a community space and an accessible accommodation. So how, I guess there's so much you've learned from doing mm. this project. How, how is the sort of new project going? And, and really what? well, yeah, it's um, on site at the moment. So it was about to go on site just when COVID happened. So we had a slight hiatus of about a month and then the client pushed ahead, which was great. Um, so it's on site I and mean, it's a very different beast in the sense that it's a series of existing barn buildings, um, stone buildings with lime mortar. It does have a timber roof. Um, so that's been really great to have a, a sort of knowledge of, of, of timber to help resolve the design of that and understand how to repair the trusses and then fabricate new trusses where necessary. Um, but I think it's a great project to learn from because you know it's a vernacular building um, and the sort of principles of it are are brilliant to learn from. So I think perhaps what it doesn't have is the kind of um, the sort of conceptual design clarity that a new build project has um, because you're working responding to what's to what's there. Um, but as a learning project, it's, it's um, yeah, I'm learning a huge amount from it, which is great. Brilliant. Thanks, Lem. And I should have added that um, everyone is uh, free and welcome to send us a question. Um, Someone was asking about the the budget for the build and saying, marvelous project, says Margot. The budget sounds like it was kind of ongoing and quite hard work. So I don't know if you want to speak about that. It sounds like you did a lot of the fundraising work yourself. Yeah, it was was quite scary at times because we just, there were moments where you just thought, is this gonna take another 10 years to get there? Um, But it was great once, I mean, the first phase, it was a pretty solo venture because the headmistress was incredibly supportive, Um, but I didn't really understand how primary schools operated. I didn't know that parents associations existed or that there was a whole series of other fundraising projects going on. By the time I did the second phase, I was much more embedded in the school and politics of it and understood how it worked. And there were a couple of parents who really, really got behind um, the project and kind of pushed it up the agenda of the PA's um, meetings. And at some point they sort of committed to to fundraising for it. And yeah, we're we're fantastic at raising um, a lot of money, I think. In the end, it's very hard to kind of define an exact budget because some things, even for the second phase at the bifolding doors were donated. Um, But I think the actual construct, sort of construction budget for timber workshops involvement was about 30,000. And then I think there was about 10 to 20,000 of in-kind donations. And then obviously, you know, a huge amount of time um, for myself, from um, Web Yates, um, free fabrication facilities, you know, at the full cost of the budget is is quite a lot um, and hard to, to measure really. Um, but we got there in the end. <laughs> Congratulations. And it is, it's fantastic to see it. Yeah, big shout out to Steve Webb of Webb Yates. We yeah. were lucky enough to work with Steve on the new, new Stone Age exhibition, looking at structural stone alongside group work and stone masonry company. So lots of stuff about that on our website. Um, some very lovely comments coming in the chat option on Zoom saying, many thanks, what a great approach. And particularly good to see time spent on site, always the best way of turbocharging your experience. And it seems like you certainly had a lot of that. And wow, very perfect idea, um, says Gary. And then something I've, I'm almost unintelligible to me, I'm afraid. Did your group attempt to design such aspect in truncated icosahedron, those structure, that stru- the structure composed of hexagon-like surfaces? 
That might mean something to you, Clem. I'm not sure what that means. I have to confess that's beyond that one's beyond me. But yes, thanks, Gary, for that for that question. Yes, and everyone saying, um, really interesting. Love the building. For me, this is Dan saying. For me, the tapered beam struts make it look like it's older than it really is. And I think that's something beautiful about the project. It looks very embedded in the site. It's really, I mean, wood is a wonderful material, and Woodwork Series is celebrating mm. wood in built works but your project looks very very tactile and welcoming it does look like it's been there for a long time well that's really nice and i think i think that's a really nice um sort of feature of timber is that it can be quite robust and very playfully detailed at the same time and sort of that taper added i mean it was obviously in part driven by the structural requirements of the joint but it added a sort of layer of sort of de decoration in a way to the structural form um, and a sort of, yeah, an undulating surface that was, yeah, driven by sort of structural principles, but the result is a is a kind of visual and, and tactile um, surface, which is really nice. Yes, I think you've, you've definitely pulled it off. Someone was asking about the musical instruments, which can be sensitive to moisture and heat change. I mean, what kind of feedback have you had from the school must love it and the kids must feel, find it joyous to be in that space. And I'm presuming yeah. you've had great feedback. Yeah, the feedback has been really good. I mean, I think, you know, the, the music teacher previously was, as I said, sort of moving between the hall and various classrooms and vying with the sports teacher to get to get the space. So I think just having her own space to begin with was a real luxury. Um, but yeah, the feedback's been really good. And as far as I know, there haven't been any issues with the musical instruments in terms of moisture. Um, there's actually one last piece of the puzzle, which is being installed this week, which are these really beautiful um, uh, woven lambs wool, um, sort of essentially curtains to go along the front of that um, window. They're kind of a series of five panels, which one of the mothers of the school, who is actually an RCA graduate and a textile designer, um, has been involved with. So that the idea of that was to help mitigate any issues with acoustics, although there haven't been any. I think that actually this, the number of surfaces, although they're quite hard and timber, the number of surfaces means that the noise sort of bounces off in a way that doesn't cause any acoustic problems and ha helps the acoustics. But the wall panels were to soften the space and then also create sort of shading um, in the summer. So they're slightly perforated, allowing light in, but creating shade. That's so that, amazing. Yes, that answers also Peter's question about acoustics. So did you work closely with the music teacher? Was, did, was she briefing you? Yeah, absolutely. So Fiona Inslee, she's actually sadly moved on from the school, but she was, um, yeah. I mean, it was great because the farm was just over the road. And because I was able to live there, um, I mean, I, yeah, I think it was about six months over the course of a whole year on and off. Um, but it meant that we could develop really, really close relationships with all, you know, a lot of the staff, some of the parents, um, and just pop over, watch how she gave lessons, sit in on lessons, talk to her. And then I think the huge advantage of the two phases was that you could sort of have even more time to sort of develop the ideas, see how it was used as a pavilion um, and get responses to it in its first phase. So the design process, although it was all quite quick in the first year, then it had a time to sort of settle in um, and evolve a little bit more before the second phase was designed, which was really helpful. That's brilliant. And we're, we're getting so many questions. We don't have time for them all, I'm afraid. One. I mean, everyone's saying what a beautiful and elegant um, project it is, which we totally agree with. So uh, maybe a last question, which is a few people have sort of asked about, do you have an issue with sort of overheating or it being cold in the winter? I guess the wool blankets yeah. might help with that. Yeah, I haven't. I was slightly worried about overheating because there isn't cross ventilation. There's a huge window at the front, but there isn't any window at the back. Um, but, I, but I haven't heard any bad feedback about that. And actually it was almost like there are two heaters in there um, and they said they had to turn one of them off. So I think heating isn't a problem. Um, 
the polycarbonate panels at the back are actually, I think you can get various different thicknesses, but they're formed, they're called twin wall or tri wall. They're quite um, deep, um, well insulating um, panels. So although you, it feels like you might lose a lot of heat through that back wall, actually you don't. And I think there's a good solar gain through the front windows. Um, and I think because they can just open those up in the summer as required, it doesn't it doesn't overheat. Um, Brilliant. Well, it certainly looks very, that final image, I think is a really joyous one to end on. I mean, it's such a beautiful project and those kids must be getting so much from it. I guess they experience music, learning music in a whole different way, being in such a wonderful space. Yes. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much, Clem. It was brilliant to catch up with you. Um, sorry, sorry about the technical glitch at the beginning. I think we got over that very smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry we couldn't answer everybody's questions. Feel free if you have any really burning questions, I can pass them on to Clem. You could email me at vnorwood at buildingcenter.co.uk. Um, lots more woodwork talks to come. Um, keep an eye on our, build, on our Building Centre website for more details. Um, Clem, please send us images when you have updates and we'd love to hear more about all the stuff you're going to do in the future. Brilliant work and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Thanks, Clem. Bye-bye.